that's Wayne right there. I've had Wayne for uh, since he was a little foal. Uh, I want to say I got him, I think I got him when he was around a year old, something like that. I think I bought him as a yearling or he was a weanling. I can't remember. I have to look at my records. Um, but he's out of a stallion called Black Wine. And uh, Andrea, Dis Andrea Disney uh, was the one who produced him. And the uh, sad thing about Black Wine is he, I think he only produced like 16 foals and then he had an emergency, I think he, some sort of form of colic. And they did emergency surgery and everything and he didn't make it. Um, uh, I'll post a picture of, that of him, Black Wine. He's a, he's a really, really beautiful horse. Looked a lot like a almost like a like a Frisian almost you know uh, just a gorgeous gorgeous horse kind of old-time bred um, so as I love I love Wayne um, like I said I've had him since he was just a little guy and uh, he's done he's done quite a bit he's had um, uh, he's been shown uh, he was shown in model class um, and uh, he's a champion in model class, and uh, so uh, he's done quite well. Like there, all our horses are barefoot. We don't. I get a lot of questions. We don't do the padded horses or anything like that. That's not our interest at all. Um, I just want these for good riding horses. Uh, so we, what we do here is we we breed. I always tell everyone we breed, raise, and train our Tennessee walkers for to be trail horses and to be good riding horses. Uh, in my opinion, it's it's how they were designed uh, from, the, from the very beginning. And uh, this is what they'll do. They'll act up a little bit. I think she wants him to breed her maybe. She's in heat right now. Uh, looks like it. Um, but having them together like this is a good thing. Uh, it really teaches the stallion a lot. Um, and uh, and it's good for them. They 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 have a get a relationship with their other with the horses and stuff. So I'm looking for that that other mare. I got a mare in here with her foal. Um, yeah. So we like I said we do we're we're quite a bit different here. Um, a lot of places will. There's not a lot of real big farms, uh, Tennessee walking horse farms, as far as that I know of. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of people breeding to uh, top studs and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of the, a lot of the people breeding the horses are kind of aging out. Or at least that's what I've been told, and the kids aren't following in their footsteps. Like I said, I'm looking for that mare and her. The new mare and her foal that I put in here to uh, see if um, if uh, Wayne would breed her. Uh, like I said, we, we're doing something really different here. We're at Ed's Walking Horses. We, like I tell everyone, we breed, raise, and train them to be good riding horses from the ground up. So horses that you'll see here on the farm. Not all, but most of them are ones that we've raised from little foals. You know, we've had them born here. We raise them. We, they get, you know, brought in and out of the field, starting with their moms. And then they, then they, when we wean them, they, we start to work with them and get them halter broke and and all that and teach them to go in in and out of trailers and that kind of stuff and so we have a lot of care and time and stuff invested in them while we're uh, while we're raising them and then we we lightly start them at about two usually a little over two and like I tell people, we don't drill them. We just start them, get them used to the ride, and get them used to some of the the aids and 
the cues and stuff, you know, learn how to ride off your seat and your legs and get used to the halters and and then the bridle and stuff. And then we turn them back out like we just did with um, Ed's uh, White Lightning. And he's gotten turned out back out with his um, with with the with the, with a herd, right? So he's we we turn him back out and let him be a horse for a while and mature, you know, and then we'll we'll bring him back and start working again at three. And like I said, we don't drill him. Uh, I was just listening to I think it was Brett Davis. He has a really good YouTube channel. It's A Davis, and he's a he starts a lot of colts. And he was talking about how the the um, the people who enter the horses in in a few futurity that they end up when they're getting them ready for it just before. I mean they they're just riding them all the time and drilling them and drilling them and drilling them. And this is where they get the injuries and stuff a lot of times. And. You know, he was saying because they just, I think he called it mashing them or smashing them. They're just, they're just drilling them. And that's how I put it. And he said that that's, that's where the people got the idea that you shouldn't start a young horse. And it's not so much starting a young horse as it is that they're drilling these things and giving them giving them like sports related injuries basically you know and it's not that they can't take some training and take a rider and learn this stuff at a younger age you know on a, on a light like we say lightly starting them and then as they start to get older you can get you know more robust with it and you know go for longer rides and do some stuff that's more athletic but anyhow we you know like rain my horse rain like he's in this picture here saddled up and i want to say he's four and he's been he's been trained and stuff like this but we don't do it every day like usually at the most we do it is three days a week every other day like monday wednesday friday and depending on what they're learning, I mean, it could be, could be an hour lesson. It could be a 10 minute lesson, you know, cause when they get it, they get it and we reward them and let them be off, you know, but so that's why, that's how we do it here. We're really quite a bit different. Like I said, you know, starting all these horses, maintaining all these horses, you know, by the time you have a, a foal, when the foal is born, oh, here she is. This is Jose's parole at the Ritz. I don't see her baby, but I'm guessing it's laying down probably by her. This is when I was checking. Uh, hey, JP, how you doing, darling? Yeah, she's looking for her baby now. Um, anyhow, like what we do, like I, like I was saying is, is by the time we have that, that foal hits the ground, we've had a, the mare care on that bull for a year because their gestation's just shy of a year it's about 11 months and uh, there's that little foal sleeping and so by the time we they hit the ground we have a year's worth of mare care in them then you got stud fees if you do it any sort of outside so you also have the stud care if we we're doing them here and then by the time they're a year old They've basically had two years of care, and then by the time they're three, they've had four, you get the picture. And so we're not flipping horses here. And I, like I told said before, I don't have a, necessarily a problem with that, but you can't compare the horses that we have here to horses that people are just dumping um, and flipping. You know, they don't want them anymore, and they sell them real cheap, and a trainer buys them, puts 30 days, 60 days, 90 days on them. And turns around and sells them. We just don't do that. Um, 
you know we're breeders and trainers here and so the stuff that we have is the stuff that we produce and um, and I don't have an open range or anything so got my pastures and then we buy a lot of hay and do all that kind of stuff so it's a little it's quite a bit different than than most most people's uh, set up uh, but I like doing it this way you know and we are doing something totally different I don't know of very many people that are trying to uh, train raises and train these to just be riding horses usually when they get to be trail horses or ride, riding horses they're ones that have been cast off from the padded industry that's just how it goes in Tennessee walkers unfortunately right now is the padded industry is where the money is and then everything else is just kind of this is probably not the right word but cast off things that don't make it for that and so like trail horses and stuff they they don't consider them to to be a a high level horse or something like that which i i disagree with i mean i think if you have a good trail horse a really good riding horse that knows cues and to ride off your seat and your body and is safe to ride and and is in good health and is an athletic thing and a good trust a trustable partner is priceless and um look at her her nurse in here and uh so and i think you know it's something you got to wrap your head around probably the thing you need to most do is sp spend time and energy in if you're if you're a beginner is in getting lessons and getting your hands on horses and working with them like that and building your confidence and building your knowledge and your ability to do things right so um you know but it's a it's a it's a lifestyle i mean working with horses it's a lifestyle i love it i mean and I think once people, if you're, if you're bent that way, once you start working with them, you just can't get enough of it. You know, you just want to be out there, the sights, the sounds, the smells, everything. They're gentle, they're sweet. Hey, you want to come here, boy? <laughs> yeah, you do, don't you? Uh, yeah, look at you, sweet thing, you. Yeah, she's a, this is a smoky black. Her father is... The diamond trip he's my cremello stallion so this horse has a cream gene and and it's a black horse so it'll be a bit a little bit lighter black and you can see the eyes if you look real close here the eyes are kind of uh, kind of ambery looking anyhow uh, but that's what we're doing uh and i keep saying it over and over again because we're trying to we're trying to do something good here and uh, I get a lot of I think people see Tennessee walking horses and and I get all these nasty comments right out of the box and it's, people don't even look at our videos and see what we're doing and see how we're training and see how we're you know they think we're torturing them and stuff like this and and they don't even realize that our horses are barefoot and and uh, we're training in a the California style, the Caro style, a, a riding. And um, I mean, I'm not. I don't know enough about it to be a hardcore traditionalist or anything. But the principles, I understand the principles, and it's what we're trying to do. And the horses seem to really enjoy it. You'll see them, you know, like. Eric rides, he'll, he'll test them out and ride bridleless with them and see how they're, see how they're doing riding off his seat or not and to find the holes in, in what he's doing and he can go back and address it. And uh, I just find it, I just find it fascinating, you know, to, to work with, and it's such an honor to be able to work with this great breed and uh, 
but we are like I keep saying we are doing something very very different most people I don't know about most but many people in gated horses they train a certain way um, you'll see the trainers out there you'll see the horses with the high head the big shank bit hollowed out back when they're riding and they're clipping along generally going in straight lines kind of thing and it's it's what people are have done for many many decades in gated horses and this is why you'll see people there's a really good trainer named Ivy Starnes she I think hers is Ivy's glide uh, glide ride I think oh, here she comes here comes JP and uh, but her basically she's working with people to help them get their horses to gate and uh, a lot of pacey horses and stuff like that and I've heard her say that she thinks it's you know the different breeding and stuff like that I think there's a small portion of it but I think a big portion of it is the training and how they've been trained and uh, and what kind of stuff they've gone through because these horses will be in the padded industry you know is what's it's what's driving it and so they they train them to go into pads and they lunge them around and get them into a, a pace and keep them in that pace and pace 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 until they until they uh, it's muscle memory and then they put uh, the pads on them on the front and they can't can no longer move that front foot as fast as they do the back foot and so they get the four beat gait out of them that way uh, but if you see in our in our videos uh, we get them to we get them to ride on end up riding on a loose rein uh, and we don't even work on the gate uh, we, we don't even work on it we we work on getting them a good foundation of training and we we focus on that getting them soft and supple uh, flexible learning to step underneath themselves all that stuff and carry a rider in a relaxed manner and when they do that when they learn to carry you in a relaxed manner they they don't rush and stuff and then you'll find that they'll just gate for you really nicely and so that's what we do how we do it um, we don't uh, we don't focus on the gate I've seen so many people they get a gated horse and they're big their whole concern is how do I get them to gate how do I get them to gate how do I get them to gate yet the horse will run through their hands they doesn't have a good stop can't bend you know is is just um, ridiculous like that and they um, they're trying to spend all this time to trying to get them to gate and if they just were to practice um, Practice getting them soft and supple, and a good, a good go, a good whoa, uh, moving off your legs. Learn how to drop your head, relax. You know, like stuff like that. When they, when they learn to move out in a relaxed manner, then you've got it. You know, um, here comes the other crew, and and then they'll just their natural ability. Uh, they'll just gate. You know. Um, and some some will do it better than others and some faster than others and whatnot but when you get them calm and relaxed they'll gate and uh, so just focus on getting a good riding horse first get a horse with a good foundation knows how to how to carry a rider in a relaxed manner and you do that 
and you've won. And uh, but sadly, that's not very common in in Tennessee walking horses. I was going to say gated horses, but I don't know for sure in the other breeds if they have the same kind of thing going on. Maybe they do. Um, let me know in the comments what what you think about this kind of stuff. But uh, you know, it's it's something like this guy right here, Wayne, is just so darn smooth when you ride him. I mean, he's just, he's like riding a sports car, you know, and uh, I've heard people say that, you know, they've, walking horses have been ruined because of the padded horse. They haven't not been doing it long enough to ruin the breed. Um, I don't believe that at all. It's just, the horses are so slow on going through generations. I mean, it's, you know. Yeah. You could breed a mare at two, and they're just going to have a foal at three. You know, I mean, and then, you know, in 60 years, you're not rolling through very many generations. And in actuality, they're not doing them like that, you know. Usually waiting. Like, I, I wait to, to breed them till they're three or four. And uh, I don't like to go too long because I, I want the mare to still be young so that she, her pelvis, can still stretch and you know like that when she's given birth um, so I don't like to wait you know I don't want to wait till she's 10 or something like that to have her first fall I think it's a way to really get complications so but anyhow uh, that's my some of my thoughts on 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 the gated horses and stuff hey this is lady hey pretty lady how you doing how you doing girl but you see how they get they get along really well. Oh, she's coming up to me. She might want to be better. <laughs> yeah, you're such a good girl. Hey, how you doing, Frosty? How you doing, sweetie pie? Huh? You a good girl? Yeah, she's a good girl. Hey, and that is wine. <laughs> kind of gave him the stink eye. Told him what to do. See, this is the kind of thing like the horses will move each move each other off by looks and pressure and stuff like that and if the horse doesn't move off then it goes to biting or kicking something like that and um, you know, they're pretty rough on each other uh, you know to get their point across and then it just all settles down and it's usually just a little squeal like that or pin in their ears or just even looking at the other horse and moving at them in a direct manner and they get their message across this is Honeysuckle right here. She's such a good girl. Hey, girl. Yeah. And anyway, I've had her since she was a little, I think, a weanling. I think I bought her as a weanling. Uh, Frosty was born here. She's called Ed's Frosty Morning because she was born. It was like four degrees when she was born. I really like what we're doing here. Uh, like I said, we're trying to do something different. Um, I think the horses really enjoy it. I think they have a good life here. Um, we're trying to trying to just do something all around that's just really good. And uh, I hope you enjoy it too. Keep following us, watching our videos, and if you can, comment in the comments below. Let us know if you'd like to see anything and and maybe your thoughts on some of this stuff. But uh, have a good day. Take care.